What's up dear painting friends? I'm Hendrik and welcome to the third part in my Skulls and Paints tutorial series of painting a tabletop world townhouse. In the previous two episodes I've showed you how to create an ultra realistic looking stone wall and in the second installment I showed you how to create a really realistic looking wood effect on your buildings. In this episode I am going to show you how to create a really nice and realistic looking metal effect on your building. Over here you already see the colors I will be using. Of course as always in my series please use whatever colors and effects you have available. You don't need to buy any of these, you can just use one of the online conversion tables. See for example what this Petri cold steel is for Citadel or Reaper or whatever color. In that sense, let's get our brushes and colors and start painting. For the first step in our 3, 2, 4 step tutorial, we're going to use a really dark metal color and a dark bronze color to start painting the metal bits. You have here complete freedom of what you think should be metal and what should be bronze. Um, right here on this I probably will be only using the metals because there's nothing over here that I imagine would be bronze. But in other parts of the building, for example with lamps and lanterns, I imagine those would have been made from bronze and there this bronze color would come in handy. So let's start off with painting some metals. Painting these metals, it is really important to work very, very cleanly that you're not putting any of the metal color on the wood or stone that we already have painted. I am not going to apply a black base coat to these. I am happy with the gray that I have over here. However, if you feel that you've used the color and you would rather have a dark or a black base coat where you are applying the metal, then you should do this before you start applying the metals. I will start with the door over here and then here on the sides we only have very small metal bits and that are the nails in the wood over here. So it's not a lot of metal that we will be painting over here on this model. The biggest metal parts are definitely those two and this one over here. And it's better to work very careful and maybe apply two layers instead of one thick one and just be really really careful so that you're not messing up what you've painted before. And that's why I also have a dry clean brush lying next to me so that in case I would have a small accident that I can fix it. If you paint careful this is a quick step as there's not that many metal parts on this model so we're already onwards to step two and in this we're using citadel typhus corrosion it's a technical paint with a little bit of structure or texture in it and it's a very nice um, paint to give this a very weathered look. So that's what I am going to apply now to my metal bits and I'm going to apply it to everything. So to the front here on the door and also to the nail heads in the wooden beams on the sides of the building. If 
you apply this again, you can work as clean as possible. But as this will be drawing pretty much the same color as the um, wood, it doesn't really matter that much if you are not 100% clean with it. But as always, the cleaner you can work, the better. Yeah, this looks really good. I'm happy with that. And now just applying it to the nail heads in the wood. As you see, I changed the water, which you also should have done because we're now don't want those metal pigments here in our typhus corrosion when we put these here. Typhus corrosion has been applied to our metal parts and now starts the third and really fun step of adding rust. If you feel like you don't want to have any rust on your metals, then you're done and can move onwards to the next piece. I, however, really like to go for a heavily weathered look on my metal bits and that's why I am using rust. You can use whatever it is that you like to um, give the idea of a rust. I have been using the Sevalejo rust wash in the past and really like it, but I also have over here an enamel um, rust color and pigments from Vallejo, which both are giving it a really nice structure and look. So however much rust you would like to have on your metal bits, this is a really great time to go crazy with the rust. I do it on the nail heads pretty selectively so that it doesn't look very uniform, but I pick out different nails that I think would be more exposed to the elements and apply a nice rust wash or pigments over there. Once we are done with applying rust, there's still the possibility for one little final highlight that you will see after I've applied my rust. With the rust effects applied to our metals, we are done. Now the little extra highlight that I hinted at previously is that I am liking to take a little bit of my base color, so this dark metal color, and then especially at these areas where I think that there would be a lot of usage and wear and tear, that they would be shiny from use. For example, on this knot, I apply a really little and fine dry brush or just a slight hint of like, okay, this is a well used handle. It um, is shiny from the many hands that are touching it. And that was my short tutorial on how I like to paint my metals on my terrain pieces. I hope you enjoyed it and you learned something and that it was useful for your own terrain projects. If it was useful, then leave me a thumbs up as it really makes a difference. If you haven't subscribed yet and you would like to see the next episodes in the following episode, I will be showing you how I paint the plaster walls on this building, then please subscribe and hit the bell next to it. That way you will not miss any future videos. As always, leave questions in the comments. I will try to get back to you right away. And thanks for taking the time to watch my videos. I will see you in the next one. Peace.